want to talk about how bananas are traded. This, this is a case study which I worked up with the Guardian newspaper. Some of you might have seen it. It filled the entire front page of the Guardian newspaper and two full inside pages in November 2007. The study itself took um, just over nine months. And we looked at how bananas are traded on paper out of Latin America. As a bit of backfill, the banana trade is dominated by three major American companies, and that helped us because American accounting standards are much more transparent than European accounting standards, which meant that we had access to much better information. Physically, they're traded straight out of the uh, exporting countries, in this case, uh, Honduras, to Britain. Um, and that journey is not nearly as exciting as the paper journey. And the paper journey is what matters. For every pound of bananas that you buy in the local co-op here, the breakdown is as follows. 13 and a half pence, if you look at the bottom corner here, stays in the exporting country, sorry, it's 13 pence, of which 1.5 pence is accounted for by labor costs, 10.5 other production costs, one pence of taxable profit stays in the country. And if it's taxed at 30%, then you're talking about 0 0.3 of your one pound stays there as taxed profits. Every single trade shown in purple here, I'm sorry, it's supposed to be a, a dynamic journey here, um, is between subsidiaries of the trading company. In this case, it's a company called Dole. You no doubt have eaten Dole products, but that similar things apply to Chiquita and Del Monte. They invoice out of Honduras to the Cayman Islands, and the Cayman Islands, their subsidiary charges eight pence for the use of the purchasing network. What does that mean? It means nothing at all. It's an intellectual property right. They then re-invoice to Luxembourg, where they charge eight pence for the use of financial services. That subsidiary then re-invoices to Ireland, where four pence is charged for the use of the brand. That might help you understand why your bananas are labelled. It doesn't cost four pence, but by labelling it, they can demonstrate there is a brand. And the brand is an intellectual property right, and they can charge for it. And they can charge whatever they want for it. On to the Isle of Man, where four pence is charged for the use of insurance services. On to Jersey, that's where I came in. I, I happened to know, because I was working in Jersey at the time, I knew about it. That's where we got the entry into the research. Six pence charged for the use of management services. Notice how that compares to the labour costs back in Honduras. On to Bermuda, 17 pence charged for the use of distribution network. Do the arithmetic, and by the time it's arrived in Britain, 47% total of 47% of your purchase price is actually accounted for by intellectual property rights parked offshore in tax havens. Does that surprise anyone? What's happened here is a totally legal process called transfer pricing. It happens not just for bananas, every single product, every single service that is traded across borders is transfer between subsidiaries of multinational companies and that accounts for the majority of world trade, goes through this kind of process. Allowing them to park super normal profits offshore in tax havens where they can avoid tax. A Bank of England estimate, which was never published, but which I'm privy to, said that at least 90% of cross-border investment into other countries is rooted through tax havens. And finally, I'm and I'm going to give you some figures for this, at least one-third of global wealth of the super-rich is held offshore. At least one-third of total wealth is held offshore by the super-rich in tax havens. This is the breakdown of the tax havens we enumerated in 2009. If you want to see the list, there are 60 here. We created this list. It was the biggest research program ever uh, into, into tax havens. Just visit www.secrecyjurisdictions.com. And there you will have a breakdown of all 60 with a report on each of these 60. This, this research, which took uh, just over two years, was funded by the Ford Foundation of America. 
If you look at the, the ones that are highlighted in yellow, those are British jurisdictions. They fly the British flag in one way or the other. You'll see the city of London on that side. Vanuatu was a, uh, was a British colony. It is, remains under, in many respects under British law. Turks and Caicos Islands, St. Vincent and Grenadines, work your way through that list, you will find that Britain's tax havens account for, approximately, for exactly one half of all of those enumerated. We're being kind there because we haven't included Ireland, which uh, and its tax haven activities are deeply rooted in British common law, and Hong Kong, which of course is now a major Chinese tax haven. The, the way I see it, Britain is the world's biggest player as a tax haven, with the city of London sitting at the core of this process. And that's not coincidental because many of the mechanisms used in tax havens rely upon British common law and British juris jurisprudence, including and especially a, a particularly harmful ruling which dates back to the 1930s, the 1936 Duke of Westminster ruling, which has in some respects created a culture. The ruling was that no man is under any obligation, no man, it's very sexist by the way, because in those days by and large women did not pay tax, but anyway, no man was any, under any obligation to maximise his tax payments. Which sounds fair enough until you reverse it, because it simply opened the door for people to say, therefore that justifies us to take every single measure conceivable to minimise our tax payment and to use lawyers and bankers and whatever money we can chuck at it to do that to, in, in that process. And that is the basis around which Britain's tax avoidance culture has driven, has, been, has emerged. The result is not only that, is that Britain is the main culprit here, I also think that Britain is amongst the main victims. We, the ordinary people of Britain, are losing 120 billion as a result of this vile uh, and corrosive culture.